Thank you for tuning in to the Blazon Nation podcast. In this episode, we had a special feature during the pre-show, and it unfortunately did not make it into the regular show. But if you keep listening after the regular show, or simply skip to the 44 minutes, 58 second mark, you can then catch the topic never heard during the regular show. Enjoy! Get off the freaking net! And welcome to the Blaze On Nation, where the World Wide Web and Real Life World collide, with your host from the depths, JBJ Blaze. And welcome to the fourth episode of the Blaze On Nation podcast, recorded on September the 21st, 2013, and here is a rundown. I finally got that bumper set up. Brace yourselves, it's the run. Yeah, that, that intro was really loud. Also, the date's wrong. Oh. <laughs> the video wrong. Oh, freak. Yeah, that was when I was gonna do it on. <laughs> Ice Wiz is just like. Ice Wiz is freaking out. Oh, it's so loud! <laughs> now, I'll edit that once I, um. Once this is all over. Uh, anyhow, on the rundown, um, good, I still have the Google Doc here. Oh, and before I start with anything, we have a guest in today, um, I'm not sure if I should say your first name, but you go by mfolks200 most places, um, yeah, and he is the owner of no, Talik, and, um, so, in stories today, there is, um, well, I still have this thing about Sammy Yadam, who, in Toronto, was shot nine times, not ten times like 50 Cent, just nine times, by an officer, while Yadam only had a knife, and, um, he can... I, I'm not sure... I, I don't think this change.org petition is still going. Um, but... Oh, he got, he got victory. He got supported. Oh, yeah. He, th there was definitely support for it, and I believe they got the police officer dealt with, and boom, he's out. Or something like that. But Yeah, um, it's the first I've heard of it. This I've been to this website before. This is the website where the... Uh, the petition for Minecon tickets at the door. That's oh. where that was. I think. I think oh. it was changed. Oh, did, I got did, for that. did you hear about the Monster Capes petition? I don't really catch up on news that much. Oh. Yeah, that, I'm the that, perfect person to be the guest for this show. Yeah, that, that put Dinner Bone and other Mojang employees through a bit of hell. In which, um, you could say that, um, Dinnerbone was P.I.S.S. He really was. He, th there were so many people, like, th this petition that was going on, people were signing it, and a whole bunch. And on the Monster Cape servers, everything was originally happy, 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 and then, F you, Jeb! You can't give us monster capes! Screw you! You suck! A whole bunch, and just totally ruined the event. Well, it didn't ruin it, but... It, it, it didn't end happy, and what's I... The, what's the date for Minecon again? Um... It is a date that I cannot attend on. Not to mention I never got to pay for the tickets. It sucks, because we, we bought the plane tickets, and, like, we booked the hotel and everything in advance before the, um, before the actual event. So, like, um, we couldn't get Minecon tickets the first time. We were like, okay, we really need to get them the last time, and we didn't. And that really sucked, because we had, like, five people on computers, and we live, like, right next to an ISP, so we have really fast internet. But we still, somehow, just could not manage to get tickets. There were so many bots... It was ridiculous. Mm. And then, um, what 
out. Oh yeah, and then the guy who made the petition apologized to Jeb. And yeah. And in the end, no one ever got a monster cape. And, and to be honest, I, I, w I was thinking, you know what, if they did do this, that would be pretty cool. But I didn't get into the petition stuff myself, so. It's like, it's like a ha happily ever after, except not. Yeah. Uh, although, uh, if Monster Cat ever hears this podcast, I doubt they ever will, but I loved it. And I hope you guys do it again. Because, again, it was awesome. I love the music and everything. But anyhow, in other news, um, in which this I recently heard over the radio, um, WJR 760 AM, they are a very good radio station. I highly recommend them, especially one of the shows that runs on there, Mark Levin, and that is... M-A-R-K-L-E-V-I-N in which he does uh, his radio show is pretty much totally politics and talking smack about Obama's politics. He, he is one of those hardcore Obama haters. And the, the latest one I heard, which was, I think, just this Wednesday, he was yelling for at least three minutes all about how Obama's health care system, shoving it down people's throats, was screwing up stuff. And a whole yeah. bunch. Then again, I barely know much about it. I mostly just concentrate on the NSA, Syria, and the gun control stuff. That's all I, I, I tend to focus on um, avoiding politics because I, politics are just terrible in my opinion. Because <laughs> don't get mad at Obama, get mad at America. Yes, um, I I'm I'm an American. I will not take offense to that. Um, but I I just don't like all this politics crap because it's it's become less of something to keep our nation sane and more of a spectator sport which is pretty much the exact opposite. So, the party system is just, like, terrible. It's like, uh... You guys only have two parties. You just have the Democrats and Republicans, and then we have conservatives, which has had their share of scandals, liberals, who don't... who uh, currently have an awful leader, um, <coughs> Justin Trudeau, who's not only... well... Then again, his smoking pot stuff doesn't really matter, but he's a crackpot anyhow, just like his father. And then... In my opinion, that's not so much of a bad thing. I mean, I don't do it, but... I don't do it. It's like, either. I was watching this video this one time, and it was hilarious. There were these, um... There was one guy smoking pot in the foreground, and then there was these two guys shooting each other in the background, and a cop walked up and arrested the guy smoking pot. I mean, like, there are much worse crimes... Yeah, that, that's... I, I really don't get it. If you want to destroy your lungs or whatever, you, that's that's your deal. And if you want to destroy your lungs, go for cigarettes with nicotine and tobacco. Magical stuff. If you, yeah. If you smoke it on no end for maybe 30 to 40 years, you're gonna pursue your dreams of killing your lungs. Follow your dreams. Yes, um, although if, well, actually killing your lungs does kill yourself, so, I, I was about to say, if you don't want to kill yourself, then don't go for smoke, because that, I uh, actually, actually, I have a friend whose grandfather originally had damaged his lungs, but didn't die, then again, they just had to trim his lungs a bit, and then, and then about a trim his lungs. Like, did he go? Did he go in? And they take the scissors out. Okay, how much off the top? That was a point. Yeah, about twenty minutes. But that's not bad. I want this podcast to go at least a little longer. <laughs> but um, in other news, oh, actually, I guess that would be something. I never put it in the show notes though. But um. 
and I forgot which place this was, but um, one of these cities here in Canada is wanting to implement a an anti-smoking law. Yeah, have fun with that. Or <laughs> so, something like that. Um, anti-smoking law in... Okay, I forget the place. So maybe I just won't even bother with show noting that. Let me guess. Texas. It's no. got to be Texas. No? no. Where? It, I, I forgot where it was, but it's a Canadian. It's in Ontario, I believe. Um, oh. Maybe look up. Ontario City banning smoke or something. But um, I guess they were gonna introduce even heavier laws on it. Mm. But um, the, the two ones that are actually in the show notes. Um, the Washington Navy Guard shooting. Um, I found this article about it. Uh, but I still don't understand it that much. I understand it a little bit. Um, I will put the link in the so show notes on CB CBS News. I'm so addicted to CBC because I, I, I think that's the Canadian one. Oh, are we going to talk about anything else? Yes, of course, um, folks. We are. <laughs> I didn't mean for you to read it out loud. <laughs> <laughs> but um, they did some stuff. Um, some uh, I'm not sure if it was an autopsy, but um, after they killed the guy, there was no suicide or pre-shooting note. Unlike stuff like the Adam Lanza case, where he, I believe, he actually did keep records of how he wanted to pull off his Sandy Hook shooting, which he is unfortunately, well, I was about to say famous, but no, he's notorious for it. <laughs> uh, I don't think I w I'd want to call a slaughter on teachers and kids, not to mention the kids. Emphasis on kids. I swear, I, I just really formed a hard fist when I heard about that on the radio. That the seals on the bus go round and round. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and I guess in that stuff, um, the latest crash, um, I'm not sure if you've heard of it, um, folks, but, um, oh, I'm sorry, but I'm... Oh my gosh, I find that so relatable. Sorry about getting off topic here, but I just found something Thangling said in the chat. I had a dream last night. I smoked a cigarette, but I didn't actually cough. Thank God, because I don't smoke. I find that very relatable. One night, I myself had a dream where I smoked. Tasted like dentine fire meets... Um, Crap, I just hit my mic again. What, what, what could it meet? Dantine Fire meets Dr. Pepper or something or other. It, it, it tasted kind of like that. Um, and, um, uh, yeah, it was during winter time, and I think for some reason I was taking these cigarettes off the snowy ground and smoking them. And gosh, ever since that awful dream, I have kept my mind on that I'm never smoking. Then again, I, I, I was about to say not even if my friends asked me to, but then again, I've had people ask me to smoke and I'm like, Go somewhere else. What high school do you go to? A 
high school where there are a lot of foul mouths and a lot of smokers and drinkers. That sounds like a fun time. Um, I go to a STEM school, and if you're not aware, STEM is, in America, a program in science, technology, engineering, and math. It's a really cool school, if you guys haven't heard of it. Yeah, and math. Oh my gosh, I love math! If you uh, haven't heard of it, and you're in America, you should try it out, because it is amazing. You go to high school, and everyone is just a jerk about everything, Um, which which is nice. Also, you get iPads. That's the main selling point. <laughs> um, it is pub- it is public, but you do have to apply for it, and it is very limited. Um, class sizes are really small, even though pretty much everyone knows about it right now. And it it's really different from public school in America right now. It's it's weird. Yeah, my school unfortunately doesn't have that program. They spend too much money on sports instead of educating kids on things that matter, like the next generation of programming. Okay. You guys have obviously, we have bigger problems, I think, because um, in our schools at least, um, the school that my mom teaches at, bought a cart, or three carts of MacBooks for third graders. Let me just let this thing in. Three carts of MacBooks that they have to replace for every three years for third graders. Oh, gosh. And then gave the high schoolers iPads, because that makes sense. Um, Also, and then um, they're like, when teachers start complaining, well, why are our paychecks so low if, you know... You, you can afford all these iPads. And, well, first of all, it's a federal grant. But second of all, they're doing it wrong. You're doing it Yeah, that reminds me, at my old school, this, um, this guy and his wife, they donated a hunk load of iPad minis. And I guess they don't even know how to use them by much. Because what ends up happening is, um, basically, iPads and stuff are great, but number one, they're a distraction most of the time. The kids that haven't gotten kicked out of STEM are basically, like, the 10% that are, you know, can learn to get rid of that distraction. And the other thing is, they happen to break a lot, and since our school is a kind of experimental lab rat kind of school, then, um... (laughs) You, you know, you kind of just have to fall back to the stuff that works anyway, which it just ends up kind of taking more time. And so the iPads are great when they do work, and they do work most of the time. I'll give them credit. But, um, like, for example, the first three months of school, every for the first two years, they tend to do this thing where they're like, okay, you're getting your iPads next week. And so the teachers plan for that. And then, like, three months later, they finally end up giving you that, giving them to you. And, you know, the teachers have pretty much made you start everything on paper because they're fed up with waiting. Mm. Oh, and that... I guess I don't really have much else to say about... Unless... Hold on. Um, if... When, ah, come on, Google Chrome. Uh, I know, Chrome. Oh, I, I, I was thinking about talking about iOS 7. Saw it on my mom's iPad. Looks ugly as heck. No, no. I, iOS 7 is great. The only thing I don't like it... Basically, it looks amazing visually, but it's glitchy. It's so glitchy. Like, um... Yeah, that's the other why, thing why, I heard about it. Yeah, why do... Apps have to actually update to get the new keyboard, which is not a standard. That's really strange of Apple. Um, you know? Because it would be really easy for them to literally just change the picture. But um, the other thing is, the keyboards aren't consistent. There's one area where it's black, and then the rest where it's, like, kind of clear. They said it was... They said it was... Then removed everything around. And, um... Yeah, it's just basically terrible. And then apps just keep on crashing so often. 
Yeah, actually, speaking of apps not working properly, my mother on her iPad, um, she has this um, library software app called Overdrive where you can get ebooks for basically a library amount of time. And for her, it stopped working properly, so she has to wait for it to work properly again on her iPad. And one thing that's really, really bad about, like, it, it's always been like this. If you don't know, um, Apple has a really scummy system about dealing with app crashes on a system, for example, a superior system such as Android, hint, hint. Um, <laughs> you guess what phone I have. Um, when an app crashes, it, it, like, physically tells you, hey, this app crashed. Is, are you okay with it or do you want to report it? But on Apple devices, you know, most, and I'm not saying this to be rude, but like in a statistical sense, most Apple people have kind of short attention spans, so they'll launch an app, and while they're waiting for it to load, it's off, and then the app will actually, if it crashes, it'll close, and there'll be no indication that it crashed at all, so you'll turn your head back and wonder if you actually end up hitting the button. And basically, people perceive that instead of an app crash, they just perceive it at, like everyday life, like, oh, what, what? And then they just click it again. In, so instead of, you know, them ever being blamed for their platform, you know, they just don't notice. And on Android, people blame Android for apps crashing a lot more often, but it doesn't. It, cr it crashes the same amount, but you just don't, you just notice it more, basically. Uh, I, I gotta say, I wish I had a webcam for my reaction there, because you just made me laugh my whole head off. When you said that. Oh, I can talk all day about Apple <laughs> stuff. There is a um, there's a kid in my school that is the biggest Apple fanboy. He like um, he will come in every day to school and he will basically be like, "Oh, Windows stuff is so complicated," on like really That's the really intuitive things. Of Windows is that it's complicated. And, yeah, and so I I gave him a challenge. Name one thing that Apple has invented. Just Apple. Nothing that is really that good. No, nothing at all. I could not think of one single thing that they have invented. And go ahead in the chat, try to look for one thing they have invented. Like, um, I for example... I at school. Yeah, my school just unblocked all their sites. Yeah. It's so awesome, I might be able to play Minecraft now. Just if the computers can actually run it, though. Oh, money, yes. Apple invented money. And oh, and with that Washington shooting thing, um, it, there's stuff that the guy who, um, the invader that I guess... Oh, wait, wait, hold on. We're getting, actually, answers in the chat for the Apple thing. Um, iPod Nano, they didn't really invent, iPod Nano is nothing but really a music player, and the first music player dates way back to like the 90s. Um, the iPhone, a phone has been invented before, smartphones have been invented before the iPhone. Um, with, like a bunch of other companies tried it and prototyped it, but they scrapped it because in their focus groups that it was shown that nobody really wanted it. But you know, this new company, Apple, they invented in quotes, I say in quotes very tightly, um, they didn't invent, the, well, the technology, the technology, or did you just cut out or something? What? Oh, did I cut out? Yeah, Hello? you said the, something, the technology, you said the technology and then boom, just cut out. Um, the technology for the iPod Nano, it's always existed. All Apple does, really, with most of their products is just make them look nicer. They just polish them. And then they try to go around and sell it because most people already trust Apple. So, and you know, that, they just go and sell too. it. That, that's how I see the Apple products. If you put I on it, or you put the Apple logo on it, it's going to sell millions. Just because of one of those two symbols. Yeah, like for example, the uh, Retina display. I mean, 
it's nice and all, and it has been tried by other companies, but they didn't go through with it because, number one, it's really expensive and really not worth the effect. It, you know, you just see things a little bit clearer, and it doesn't really end up mattering. And I know, because I have um, retina devices and non-retina devices, and iPad mini, yeah. The iPad mini is just the iPad, but smaller. Yeah. It, and Android tablets have that beat. Um, did not sell that well. Oh, yeah. But, like, for example, the Nexus tab. There is a Nexus 7 and a Nexus 5, and the 5 and the 7 refer to the measurements, not the version. So there's a big tablet and a little tablet, and that was out... It might have been out before... Yeah, I think it was out in between the iPad and the iPad Mini. Um, but a tablet has actually been invented before the first tablet actually ran DOS, and I'm not joking. They, um... They put a contact resistive screen onto a CRT monitor. Well, not a CRT monitor, but like a flat panel monitor. Hmm. And, uh, yeah. Technically a tablet. But, um, but back with the Washington Navy Yard again. Um, basically, hey, like any other case, the guy had mental health issues. But. I guess in the end they killed him anyway. So that's the yep. last that I have to say on that. And the last article, or at least until, unless maybe M. Folks comes up with something, is, and this was on the radio, Starbucks banning the opening of carrying of firearms within their restaurants. And what? Watch. No. No. Really? Yep. Oh. Th there used to be a whole thing on that with, um, I guess the laws or something. Um, but it was somewhere in the states, um, uh, Los Angeles maybe, because this article I have is from the Los Angeles Times. And, um, Basically, after that, it started a, up a whole debate on gun control. That... Well, you know, like, first of all, does it, what are the actual rules on it? Like, does it say that you can't carry open guns, you can't actually hold the gun? Or what, what are the rules? What are... Open carry of a firearm means you don't have it in, in a case or anything with you, which is sealed carry. You're carrying your gun, and people can see it. To be honest, I kind of support that policy, because that policy, will, you, you basically, you won't get in trouble for a gun in a holster. You won't get in trouble for a concealed firearm. Basically, you only get in trouble if you're actually ho actively holding the gun, which, you know, isn't really that isn't really that bad in my opinion because again, you know, Starbucks is a brand and they have to kind of protect that brand. If they walk into a Starbucks and see someone holding a gun, they're not going to feel, you know, as safe in that in that Starbucks. Well, then again, the only other thing and what I find about it is unless the person's actually got the gun ready to shoot, then... Yeah. And unless they just have it maybe the gun is at their back or something, and not loaded at all, then so someone can maybe pull that trigger, but nothing's gonna happen. And, um, yeah. th they're not gonna be able to, well, they can easily reach over, but then they can't really do much in terms of shooting, because then they gotta reach out their ammo and load it up, and then... Here, um, Balloon Boy, you're saying Americans have, should have no laws against guns and our right is to own a gun. That's true, you are allowed to own a gun, but then again, you're technically on someone else's property. Like, the fact that you're not allowed to ter carry a gun onto uh, school grounds unless you're a police officer. Um, you know, would, would you try to fight that? I mean, it kind of goes hand in hand, that's their property, and if they want, they have the right to kick you out or to, um, restrict your access, like... To say no, you can't carry a gun in there. Mm -hmm. Now, That's again, like too. it would be against the Constitution to make a law that you can't 
like to make a lot of saying you can't carry your gun on your property. You can carry your gun basically however you want on your property as long as you are not endangering the lives of someone else or on someone else's property. Oh, that's I, I, where you got this stuff about no laws against guns. One of the people in chat, I was about to say, I don't think guys that use had no laws. Thank you, these guys I, definitely do have laws, especially in some states with gun licenses and background checks, that sort of stuff I'm looking for. Then here in Canada, we have it where you get a background check and then you... Well, actually, it's either you get a background check first, or you do your test first, and then you get your background check, and then you can, and then if you pass the test, you can get the license, and then there's the regular, and then there's the restricted, which is, I believe, for handguns, or at least some handguns, and then prohibited, which involves fully autos. Or at least a section of the prohibited is fully autos. Your second, it is the Second Amendment for your right to be able to own a gun. But you know, on the other hand, you don't always want to, you know, exercise all your rights. Like for example, you wouldn't want to go down the street pointing your gun at everyone. I mean, you know. Well, if, if you point a gun I'm at a sure. person, then that 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 I can. Uh, I definitely agree with that that person should be dealt with because that, that they could be ready to shoot you. And yeah, because like, again, you know, Starbucks, it is their property, and at the end of the day, they can tell you to do whatever they want on your property. Basically, they can, they can set up a, a set of rules and then say, if you don't want to follow these, then leave. Yeah, that's the other um, thing. And, and that's, that's their thing. That's their right. Anyhow, that, that's the other thing, too. If an owner of their own business wants to make up their uh, specific rule, then they are allowed. That, that's the thing with Canada as well. Um, in schools, well, in Canada there is free speech, but in a school, they can suspend you for using strong language. That is a law that I really don't get. I really don't get the stigma against bad language. I mean, a word's a word. And to be honest, like, basically telling a kid they can't say that word, that that word will get them in trouble, that's the only word they're going to say. And then don't mention it at all. Because, I mean, again, at the end of the day, it's just a word. It's doing no one else harm. Well, unless certain people don't want to hear it, but... Well, you know, again, at that point it does really get to freedom of speech. Like, um... Basically, just like, if someone said the word the, you wouldn't walk over them <laughs> and say, Hey, don't say that strong language. Um, yeah, I mean, that, that's just, a you, don't, you don't do it like that, so, so why would you do it with other words? Bob, say it. <laughs> I just, I, just I don't understand. I don't understand people. I don't understand a lot of the world. I don't understand terrorism or... Well, then again, I guess with that, just twisting a religion to <coughs> suit your own bullcrap. I put it as what's in the religion, what well, what's actually in there is there. It's not meant to be twisted. The rules are there, but anyhow, other than that, this ain't really supposed to be mostly or eh, about religion. But um, how how much have we been running for now on here? I have no idea. Hmm, I haven't an idea either. Oh. And then, um, the other thing, too, I think, is... I think it's been about 15, 20 minutes. Huh. But, um... The other stuff about it, too, is, um... Well, with the whole gun control debate, 
after that there's a whole bunch of stuff and what the Starbucks owner laid it down to was um, they basically and it's like the uh, guy I forget his name now Charles Miller in which he is the owner of the smart gun technology company and of course he can say what he wants but um, similar case they state they um, have a neutrality on it when by their actions you can easily tell what their stance is like those companies like the smart gun companies I honestly really am not a fan of companies like that because then you know you've got a whole system for gun control and that's great and all but it's controlled by one person. It's controlled by the government. And we already know the government is not to be trusted, especially with this new NSA scandal. Yeah. <laughs> you give the government too much power, and they will abuse it. That's just how the system works. They want money. They'll get it. Um, and so all this stuff to put in stuff, you know, that's great, but it's eventually going to be abused. That's how all systems work. And a bad thing about that is now that you have this control system in place, now the government has a monopoly on something. They have an opportunity to monopolize on something. And especially, like, I was reading this one thing that was uh, to restrict 3D printing. Oh, that, that is there, really that, just lame. <laughs> there, there, there was this poll on it, and um, I, I got a feeling you're cut out or something somehow. But um, when these people... Maybe it was out of a thousand people or ten thousand or so, and um, when they were asked, should be should 3D printing be illegal? And most said, well, that it should be, that it's fine if it's legal. But then when it came to that these things can make guns, fully functional firearms. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that That I... is a big misconception. Uh, fully functional firearms, not really. At, at best, with, like, a 32-hour printing process, like, which is the fastest they can do, it can print a firearm that can shoot... I think you just cut off again. Mike has been acting up. Um... The 3D printing a gun thing is a big misconception. At best, in 32 hours, it can print one gun that can shoot, like, one of the smallest bullets available one time. At best. So it is really not a very good solution for actually printing guns. Basically, the big reason that everyone's making a big deal out of it is because they're spreading the files around as a way of just, like, sticking a middle finger to the government saying, no, we're not going to let you try to control this. Yeah, that, that's another thing, too, is DRM stuff came into play. DRM is evil. Well, other than Steam DRM, that's not bad stuff. But Steam DRM... Any kind of You're cutting out again. You said any kind of, and then you just cut out. Alright, <laughs> sorry. That's okay. Blame it on your microphone. Yeah, bad. Or whatever your computer's doing. But, um, I guess it's probably good enough time to close up here. Um, before I go, um, I mentioned this in the pre-show. My friend here, M folks, who is tonight's guest. I just um, wait. I realize my camera's not on. Yeah, you don't need your camera. I'm <laughs> putting that into the stream, and I'm probably not gonna show my real face until I'm legally adult, unless I can somehow strap my cat mask, which would only cover up my eyes, and maybe I'll do a webcam. So kind of like um, Try Hard Ninja, if you watch his stuff, his vlogs, he just dresses up like a ninja and he can't see his face at all. He can't see his eyes though, just not his face. But um, anyhow, um, with what I mentioned during the pre-show, 
store dot notalic. N o t e l e k dot com. And there you can get. Um. So far, it looks like just web hosting. The, yeah, the web hosting. So far, that looks like the only functional thing right now. You can get it for as low as one ninety nine USD per month. Go there, click buy, give this guy some money. He needs it. Plus, and hopefully, if I can get enough money for whatever, I can pay him for it too. So these guys won't be alone. And again, the date on this thing is incorrect. This is not the 19th, although the original planned run was the 19th, but I changed it to the 21st. Um, for future updates, um, well, the link is up on the video thing here. But um, you can go, you can follow at JBJ Blaze for updates on what the show's gonna be, or at jbjblaze.tumblr.com. Um, what what's your t what is your Twitter, M folks? At no telek no t e l e k. And your YouTube, if you wanna pimp that out too. Um, I wouldn't go there. It's not really many uh, stuff. There's not really much stuff on there. Oh, so. what what about your FTB? You were doing some feed the beast. That was my what? Your feed the beast. Oh, um, my Minecraft. Yeah. Uh, M Folks two hundred. M O F M F O U L K S two zero zero. And if you get and hear that clearly, I will put that in the show notes. Um, uh, you can also join our Steam community. The flippin' awesome, all one word, and it's not flipping, flippin', and also you can find the YouTube channel, which I will be publishing the YouTube, ver uh, the video version of this podcast to youtube.com slash jbjblaze, and you can find the podcast also on Spreaker, and that is S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R. Um, dot com slash so slash show slash blaze on nation just like the title you see on there and you can find the show notes at the flippin awesome dot engine dot com that is engine with a j instead of a g and no e at the end dot com slash B and P, there you can also fill out a listener contribution for the next show, and um, there will be show notes there, as well as under the video for you for the YouTube, and blazonation.tk, the official blog, you can go there for new blog posts if I get to those, and... Um, yeah, so far that is all. I thank you all for watching, and... See you later. See ya. Oh, and um, folks, if you want to stay on, feel free. We might do an after show, I don't know. D do you have time for an after show? Uh, a couple minutes. Okay. And... Cue the outro. Oh, and also, if you ha if any of you guys have a bumper, which is kind of like the rundown one. Brace like yourselves! That. It's the rundown. So basically, anything like that that I can play before a section, um, you can send that to. Um, you can email me the link or whatever, or just an attachment file of it. Um, N word. Actually, no, I won't give you that. Um, what's a better one? That's a bad idea. Um, what's. 
Actually, how about this? Add me on Skype, JBJ Blaze, and send it to me there. And unless I get something better set up, maybe I'll go that way. He thinks Aswiz should turn down his volume before he breaks his ears again. <laughs> the outro. And let's the news. What do you mean you want more? Or did you miss something? Hey, if so, go to blazonation.tk for more articles and show notes, the flippin' awesome.engine.com slash BNP for show notes, and to sponsor a future episode. Thanks for waiting, and now, the special feature from the pre-show. So, what should we talk about, I guess? Someone said stream fa- or Steam family sharing. That sounds like yes. pretty interesting. I right, I've that's heard a lot of I've heard a lot about it from other people, but I haven't heard anything firsthand from uh, Steam. Which yeah, you know, it goes yeah. both ways because you know I don't know if it's just a rumor that someone started or something that Steam's actually going to do. Because if yeah, Steam actually, actually does do it, I'd love to see how it actually works and everything. But yeah, actually, um, actually, there's a Steam group for family sharing now. And yeah, it, it is official. Huh. Just not the Left 4 Dead 3 thing or any of that. Unless that is official then. I never knew. Anonymous Coyote. <laughs> That's what Google Docs is calling you, um, folks. The Anonymous Coyote. <laughs> um, and for Bloom Boy, family sharing is something that Steam... Well, I've heard from people that Steam is planning to implement kind of like an kind of like just console games, you know, you can like lend your disc to someone else. It's just that whenever you're lending it to someone else, you can't play it, you know, bo- like both play it at the same time, which kind of sucks. I've been in on a lot of the Steam betas recently, but I haven't been in on this one. I've been on on like the uh, trading card ones. Yeah, I, I was in on the tra- Were you in on the community beta too? Um, no, I don't think it was on that one. Hmm. Um, but I'm really excited about this uh, family sharing thing, because... I, I am too, because then I can maybe play some of my brother's games, whether it's J-Dubs, who was on our server once, and then decided to poop with it, or even one of Tim's games, because... They have stuff like Saints Row or Grand Theft Auto 4. Which and it I don't will, have. as someone, as, as people are pointing out, it, it will make the sales go down just a little bit, but on the other hand, um, n- number one, it's good PR for uh, Valve, you know, doing things that the community wants, that's going to be, like, one of their number one priorities, because, you know, that's just the way Valve works. But then, on the other hand, yeah, people will ask to borrow the game all the time, but... Oh, is that what PR means? Priority? Uh, I, no. Public heard, relations. Oh, public relations! Son of a gun. I was thinking maybe, um, pair, like what I get with Google Dictionary when I double click PR. Or, um, public release. Which always makes me think of Minecraft, because, well, actually, they did release candidates, but. Also, you know, another thing about this, people, hey, can I borrow that game? That'll work a lot for games that are mainly single-player, but for games that are mostly multiplayer, 